Good morning. I'm going to start recording today's video of the Conference of the Presidents, and it is Friday, July 19th, um, and he's about to start. So here goes nothing. Hopefully it starts quickly. Looks like it should be any moment now. Okay. Uh, so just waiting to start without jumping over anything. Last week, the federal police was, and last week also we, we had uh, the um, so we had a good week this week. And, and I hope that it continues that way. However, there, there has to be movement, mobility. If everything's too uh, flat or plain, it gets lazy. We require mobility. This is also a sign of that changes are taking place. And if nothing moved, not even a, 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 a uh, leaf from the tree of politics, then we would be worried. But there is movement. You can feel the winds of transformation and change. We are going to devote this first part to questions and answers because I have to go to a commission of legislators from the United States. And I also have to travel to San Luis Potosí to the meeting of, of the weekend. But if you would mind, oh, we'll start with this round. And then we'll ask San Juana, San Juana eh, the director of eh, Notimex, eh, to converse with you all. That there be an exchange of points of view. And she exposed Notimex, what Notimex is eh, doing. Que la Jesús and that Jesus accompany her para que, eh, se in order that he can also get informed over what's happening with to integrate the whole system of communication of the government of the Mexican uh, country este or the state of Mexico and, and to integrate Notimex with radio stations, uh, uh, channels, TV channels that belong to the public sector in order to group them and to guarantee the right to information. This is a, a good matter. And it would mean attending to Notimex and to, and that's how we take this program. And we've invited Genaro Miramí. But you could also inform yourself regarding this matter. And then Genaro will explain how we are articulating all these uh, media for there to be a better information and the right to the information. We've started. Hello, President. 
con ellos, me gustaría saber su opinión sobre este tema. Uh, you know, regarding the migration of children, and it seems they're accelerating the return of children. Children have our protection, they're something special, and we have to be very careful. If migrants are protected and backed and supported, you can prevent a violation of human rights with more reason. We are being very careful with the attention to children. We even have plans from UNICEF in order uh, for this purpose. If there's some information that is different, the Secretary of Foreign Relations informed me regarding what is happening. And last week he talked about regarding hospitals that needed doctors. Do you have some agreement with the directors of this uh, area to uh, increase the number of doctors in uh, Mexico? One of the works that is being done to increase the uh, benefits of health is to do a census over the doctors, specialists that exist in our country, doctors that we have in our country, and where are they? And where are they working? Um, but of course, in the system of health, or public health, there are deficiencies. We've already uh, ascertained that as I uh, travel through the hospitals. And of the about 13 to 14 hospitals I visited, more than half, they only have one, like a radiologist, that has one shift. They don't have radiology for the night or in the middle of the night or in the morning. And also not even weekends. And we're talking about hospitals that is from IMSS Benestar that are the bigger, better ones. And there's other hospitals that are, in, that are completely empty that they need many doctors. And I'm also talking about hospitals that are rural. The hospital is situated if, even when it's a rural restaurant, I mean hospital, in an area with more population, it might be a head of a, a municipality like this. But the, the little clinics are in the little area. And in those areas, we have more trouble. For example, for uh, these uh, 13 hospitals that are seven in Chiapas, one in Nayarit, and five in Michoacán. Thirteen. Only in one can they attend a, uh, say, for example, a stroke, a heart attack. Of the 13, there is equipment for that which means also special medications. It's not to attend a definite for a definite time, but even to give the initial um, help to, to take to a higher level of care, and then they, he could come out ahead. But only in one, 
Did they have the equipment and the medication? And uh, to remove the clots, and, he could, and the patient could then be taken to another hospital, like two to three hours later, and save his life. So yes, there is. We, there is a need for, for to increase to improve health services, and that's why. They always attend more in the cities where there is where there's more vigilance by the citizens where there's more possibilities of people to complain. But in the poorest areas even if they complain Nobody listens to them. It's a disgrace what's happening. And that's why we are making, doing this census or inventory in order to help. We've decided to uh, have uh, schools of medicine to get specialists and doctors. That's a new um, goal and uh, something, something that was left over from that neoliberal uh, uh, political system. It was when the young children tried, or young people tried to enter the colleges, they said they didn't pass um, the exams. And, and then that was even worse when it came to sí. to college um, medicine. So if a thousand showed up for the test, they would only let a hundred pass. So at the end, after 34, 36 years of that politics, well, we wound up with no doctors. And now, the doctors, many of them, they don't want to go work to communities that are far and rural hospitals. <laughs> because you get paid the same as in the cities than as the rural hospitals. So now we've got to pay them more to those that work in the rural areas like the Bastiaje, Chapa. And also, because of the insecurity in the country and a lack of safety, like in Buena Vista, not only are they short of doctors, in Michoacán, no llegan, they don't get there. Pacientes. They don't get patients. En otros hospitales de estos 13, of other hospitals están, of this area, saturados. they're saturated. 80, 80 or 100. Este, eh, por ciento de ocupación. Uh, 100% of uh, occupation of their bed. Generally, there are 40 bed hospitals and they're full and with problems to attend to the patients. In the case of Buena Vista, it's 50% of occupation. And, and that, that is the reality in our country. That is what was done by the neoliberals that were corrupt. They abandoned the people. They devoted themselves to making juices, uh, juicy deals at the cost of the, of the people, all business, that's all they cared about. Now the diagnosis is we need to be precise. No, it's not just to you get more. 
presupuesto. Uh, money or budget. Es, a ver, now we, es we say this is a budget and this is a program that's special propósito. with this purpose. Si and if you have a hundred students, we want you to have two to three hundred students. Because not only that, it's not just to give budgets. Listen well, conservatives. You give the budgets, the money, to, to those that failed. So they used to say, how? How are they going to join uh, um, automatically those that did not have good grades? So they denied. They didn't, they didn't fail because they hadn't passed the exam. They all passed the majority passed the exam. It's because they were applying a test, a question, like say out of 120 questions, because they didn't have space, they would decide if, the, if it didn't have influentialism um, due to budget or due to space, they used to say out of seven, out of 120, they would have to answer 117 out of 120 questions correctly in order to get in the program. But the one who answered 116 or 115, they didn't get to go in. So it wasn't that they weren't passing the exam. It's just that there wasn't enough space and budget. Because the purpose was to encourage private education, that they study that one that had money or money for funds for school. So at the end of it, the increase, they had an increase in private schools with a higher percentage than in public schools. But then there came a moment that it slowed down the uh, enrollment of private schools because most Mexicans didn't have to, the money to pay for college. Even at how inexpensive they were. The one, the field workers earned, like in the city of Mexico, they earn about 5,000 a month. And for their children to study, they had to pay 3,000 a month. From where would they get it? This was a great suffrage for the parents because they wanted to give their children education and they couldn't. So this was not understood by these technocrats that were corrupt. These neoliberals, they didn't care. So it's not that the ones that were failing were entering because I have the understanding or idea that it's preferable to have all of them in school than to have them in, on the streets. However, but the international finances, they had planned these reforms from the uh, external sources, they didn't, they didn't, they used this as an excuse that we had no excellence in our education, and so they didn't invest in public education. 
that politics was clearly something we're not going to follow. That will not continue. Yes, we care about the quality, but we also care the, the coverage and the access. That education be a right, not a privilege. That is a good analysis uh, or matter, and ex including Yunnan in the uh, neoliberal period, they condemned those that opposed to the charging of quotas and defended automatically passing. So let's analyze this situation. Due to those movements, now Yunnan belongs to the universities that have the most uh, students that are poor, that are studying. And I attribute it to the automatic passing. Then if, that if you were in CCH, you would automatically pass. Uh, students from uh, young people from uh, popular uh, schools, which otherwise would be too difficult. So due to their automatically passing in Yunnan, about 60% of all students, around 300,000, are from families of low resources. And in the rest of the universities, it is not like that. But I am also going to point something out. UNAM is one of the best universities of the world. They combine both things. Access for all and the quality of the teaching. But that was because the defense that, that we did and they disprestiged by the conservatives for UNAM to the grade or extent that, that's why the government was full. And that was another reason of professionals from other schools. Because they had a, a uh, like vestiture of against public school. So now the school has rung, and the bell has rung, and it is no longer the same. So regarding the order of apprehension that he was that he was the author of regarding the bribes that he was the author of bribes uh, that was Osada and if your government ordered an internal investigation regarding Pemex like to find out who else was responsible in this case yes we are participating and helping to the fiscal of our district attorney. Any, anything that's been solicited from us was given to them regarding information. That is the instruction they have, these public servants. 
in a special way, the uh, counselor, judicial counselor. And the one who takes care of the management of Hacienda. Of all that that is related to the movement of money. Uh, in financial intelligence. And we're helping with that. Let's review what I said when I took my position. First, there would not be persecution. And I was not here to take revenge. That I thought it important to put a final point that that was my position not to start with persecution on these that were responsible for the looting and to look ahead, look forward. Because we would have to review and do examine the very top in order to finish with a simulation that they had that they would have the ones the ones and the workers and the uh, low lower man of a totem pole were the ones that were getting. Uh, punished. And I expressed before that the best way was to condemn them to the regimen of the ne neoliberal that is synon uh, synonymous with looting and stealing. And we would not, as an executive, promote or these uh, um, claims. Sin embargo, However, we also que todas las uh, cleared up that all um, claims en curso, that were in course si a were conti going to no continue, a that we were not going to hold back ninguna, eh, any uh, claim, and we weren't going to block or cover and cover anything. And another important thing that if there was a final point, it was for those that participated in the past administrations, not for ourselves. For, for those that were arriving to, to uh, take care of the charges. So none of us have contemplated. I will continue to insist that they uh, disappear these funcionarios. Um, uh, that you, I can uh, insist that they, if someone commits an act of corruption, they need to be meet justice. Uh, and in the case of Lozoya, Lozoya uh, era una investigación it was an investigation este, de tiempo atrás. Como el caso también, or in the case also uh, of, el abogado, of the attorney. I can't remember his name, El Collado. And in the case of in the Mr. Ancira, 
They used to make these uh, complaints behind them. And due to some stumbling blocks and slowness, or for whatever reason, they didn't take its course. So the only thing we've done is to remit all of the information to the district attorney, uh, attorney and not hold anything back. Neither will we give indication, not in one sense or the other, to the attorney, district attorney to act with autonomy in order that we can end with this corruption. We did not have information regarding the uh, thing you're talking about, but the fiscal, our attorney general, will request the testimony of those involved. We don't have anything uh, like anything proof or anything against the president. What about Odebrecht? No. Not that and not other cases. I do have information that maybe one of the uh, ex-presidents owes taxes. No, but it's, it has to do with SAT. You see how they used to be so demanding. And saying that what they lived from, for, what they used to ask, what does AMLO live from? And does he pay taxes? I've always been current. I always manifest my taxes. That certainly. My point, in fact, it's not a little, the discount, especially with what has to do with books, which has my basic income. Um, and now, SAT is uh, prohibiting that there be evasion. One of the biggest virtues of uh, uh, corruption in Mexico was or had to do with a lot of the condoning of taxes. They, they even talked of um, uh, making arrangements from above. They created special systems in order to to reduce or not pay taxes. It was part of the agreements of the uh, upper group of power. That is no longer applying. But for what you're asking, we do not have anything. Sorry, have you been in contact with other people? So the attorney, district attorney is dealing with uh, where Lozoya is. 
but also we have uh, no reason to cover. We don't protect anyone. He has two questions. One is FBI is looking for Emiliano Salinas uh, for Nexium situation. You declined to uh, uh, will you be helping the, with giving information to the U.S. government to capture that guy? It's a matter that, that deals with the district attorney. I don't want to evade my responsibility. It's just that the district attorney is autonomous. And these matters belong to him. Politically, I maintain that we should not put our family in these things. Even if we have differences, in this case with the ex-president, Carlos Salinas, I still consider him like a bad governor, a government official. And I've called them and I've sustained in basis in order to say he is the father of uh, modern inequality, Carlos Salinas. Because of everything that they did, with how they took the goods from the nation to the public, to, to private entities. It was like a piñata. It was like a, we were a great piñata. They used to give to the companies, the banks, and their delegates. I condemn that. However, regarding his children, no. I don't get involved in that. Because what fault is it of theirs? I think we should not get involved in that with the family. That is my point of view. Yes, if they committed a crime, the competent authorities, but the presidency should not be the one trying to make a judgment in this case or this type of situation because it is not appropriate. And it would be a, a political pos position. And no, have to assume their own responsibilities. Why is the son going to pay for the bad um, behavior and fame of his father? And besides, that's not really our business. Not the sons. La familia, no. The family, no. Pero es un de moral pública, but that's a matter of uh, public morale eh, or morals. Mexico received 7,600 money from Mexicans in me the U.S., which was a 7.1% increase compared to the same uh, period of the previous year. And I've asked regarding the banking convention, and you were there, what was the matter that they were going to discuss regarding the high commissions that they were charging 
uh, excessive in the efforts, and they work very hard to send this money. But what can, is the government doing to lower the costs for them to send the money? First of all, I want to thank you or thank our um, countrymen, our heroes that are living. Because they are the most that are helping to strengthen the national economy. The remittances are the primary form of uh, income that this country has. And besides that, not only is it $35 million a year, it is a money that is distributed to millions of Mexicans, that it helps the economies in the regions or reactivates it. It's, it's not like other branches of the economy. It might mean that the incomes that are important, but there's more concentration of gains and utility. It doesn't have the same distribution as these remittances. Plus, there's other branches that may mean in income. But at the same time, the companies were sending to their, their uh, original companies. So that remittances is what permits many uh, provinces to have circulating, that there would be consumption in the stores, in the towns. This is Zacatecas or Guanajuato or Veracruz and many states that live off of these remittances. So, first of all, our thankfulness, our gratefulness and recognition to our uh, countrymen because they left. They were forced to leave because there was no opportunities in our country due to the political economics that were imposed upon them. And they faced everything, discrimination, bad treatment. They go and get ahead. And now they are helping us in our country. So what are we doing? First of all, we have to protect them. Always give them their place. They are Mexicans of first quality. These are countrymen that are migrants. Always will we give them their place to protect them against discrimination and persecution of the government from the United States. We'll always protect them. We will strengthen the consulate, the 50 consulates that Mexico has in the United States. And in the case, particularly of the remittances, there's two things. I am going to continue to ask that, that the banks lower or reduce the charges for commission when they're sending remittances. And I did tell them in the convention, and when I return, I will take the information. Next year, when I invite them, I will open with that. 
Estos fueron los bancos These were the banks que cobraron menos. that charged less. Estos son These are los que cobraron más. the ones that charged more. Un poco como el quién, kind of quién. like the who's who in our gas. <laughs> Because les pedí I asked them that they este, help en este tema. in this matter. Vamos a hacerlo, We will first eh, be doing this. Vamos a ver el we're going to see first the results. Otro, And the other thing that we're doing es que Bansefi, is that Vansefi will now be converted to what be. That is good news. Ya se autorizó It has been authorized, the creation, the bank of uh, well-being. And this bank will have branches in the most distant areas. And also, I want to tell you that we also created the public company in order to communicate the country with internet. That's another information I want to tell you. It's a company of telecommunications and internet for all. Today, we are giving them the name. It's a, a, it's a commission of Federal Commission of Electricity. Why did we put it in the Federal Commission of Electricity because we use their whole infrastructure of the federal electricity, all their lines. We count on lines of fiber optics in order to communicate via internet for the country. So, so that has been approved by the Council of Administration for the commission of uh, Federal Commission of Electricity. And now, we are getting the uh, applications for counting on con con the concession y poder dar el and be able to give the service de lucro without lucrative uh, gains todos los que viven en las comunidades to all those that live in the most outskirts of the country. Entonces, con este so, With this system, se va, we eh, will be able to a tener, eh, give un, un mechanism de a, a mechanism of communication that will also be used by the bank of well-being. And they'll be given branches in every de los of the integral centers of services. I was explaining that there's 300,000 in the whole country, which is a great dispersion. And what we're doing is organizing and defining central, integral centers of service that are near, that are near to the smaller areas that have been uh, selected uh, by the bigger countries areas that have the best location to give to the smaller communities. So these are integral centers of services that we've got more than 10,000 centers. In these 10,000 centers, internet will go there according to the, to the first studies. The internet will come via the Electrical uh, Federal Commission, and they will have an antenna in order to communicate a whole area, a radio, that reaches all the other communities. That has to do with communication, and the same with the banks of the well-being. In these cases, or areas, They will have they will have branches of, from this bank, and and in those towns, 
they will be getting their remittances. So then, when they have those establish the system, there, there will be com competing so that they can lower their uh, commissions for the remittances. That's our plan in general. Also, we have public banks that are um, going to be there. And Banca, that's all they left. And Banca will convert itself in the bank of the magistrate. Hello, Mr. President. and regarding the, uh, the sulfuric acid spill that is a problem. So far, they, they've had 22 incidents related to these uh, dangers that have contaminated from this company. And in less than a uh, few days are going to be five years since the last uh, heavy metals that were introduced. And the inhabitants of the area are demanding that there be justice related to that. And before I've asked you about the uh, uh, federal commission regarding the river that also had uh, contamination. And he doesn't know yet what. And yesterday and day before, they had administrations in Hermosillo that are asking that they revoke their concession because, um, and yesterday, deputies from Sonora are moving a initiative to revoke their concession because when they when they have these type of uh, failures. So what are you doing regarding this matter with Grupo Mexico? And if we have a determination regarding this company. Yes, we are attending to this case. Victor Manuel Toledo has instruction to present all the information. And he did let us know something initially regarding the accidents and uh, spills and damages caused by this company. Not only in Mexico, but other places and other countries. We have to, all the data, and to listen to the company and dialogue and before taking a drastic measure look for an agreement because we need to be careful of our uh, fountains of work it's an equilibrium that we have to maintain in within the economic and the conserva conservation of uh, the environment. If the damages is more or greater, and if there's no possibility of correcting the damages that are caused to, na to nature and environment, then we, we will not be able to, uh, that there is no number of economy or measures, economical measures that would be, make it worth it. The most important thing is nature and the environment. However, we will attempt to 
continue to have development Sin violar without violating normas normals de medio ambiente of the environment, which is substantial development. So we're looking at it that way eh, with lots of professionalism. And I used to tell que, you the time before that eh, no hay, eh, para there nadie. are no privileges for anyone. The most important thing is the human being. Nothing that damages the health. Nothing that, that uh, is against life. Nothing that means affecting dignity of people is going to be above But these, like these goods or these precepts, none of these things. It cannot be, it cannot be political that is above of justice in our country. No more in created interest groups that are deciding. It is now being separated between political power and, and uh, politi economical power. So this is all about Mexico and the well of Mexico and their principal mission to provide the happiness of the people. And this means well-being of the people. And yesterday I spoke that it's not just to grow for the sake of growing. We're not going to grow at the cost of losing our uh, environment. What what would we then be leaving for future generations? So therefore, it is growing without affecting the environment and protecting the health of the people. And that is our position from the Secretary of uh, uh, Environment. It's not as it was where they, they gave permits and concessions. They didn't care without taking into consideration the people or their opinion, the impacts that it had on the environment. And we're dealing with this, and Toledo is working on that, and that's his purpose. But we're not, we're not going to act in an arbitrary way. We're going to dialogue. We're going to try to convince or persuade before taking a decision that is more drastic. Have you got any uh, advancements on the video commission? Yes, but we will inform you. What about the mining fund? Some resolution from the federal court regarding a controversy in Chihuahua and 20 municipalities. It seemed that there was a window regarding who's, who's got uh, the reason or the right regarding a, a posture and regarding this judicial course. And in some occasions, that they wanted to exercise the first five years of their uh, mining fund. 4,012 million pesos that were <coughs> taken, and they don't know what happened to them. So yes, there is some judicial powers uh, with this uh, controversy. I, have, I understand that they attracted and that they are going to resolve it with the Supreme Court regarding this matter. We, we want that these resources arrive in a direct way to the people of the mining zones. We don't, we don't want it to go through the state governments and municipal governments. 
because in some cases they had not uh, good management of these funds to the extent that the people that live in that zone didn't even know that they even had this fund. This I know for a fact because I've been in towns for miners and I've asked them about it. They don't even have information regarding the use for the money of the resources that were given for the people. So therefore, we want that these funds go directly to the people. Just as we're giving all benefits, they will not be going through any government agencies because what goes through the government now less, but before it was like magical governments. Everything would disappear. It didn't get to them, the resources. So that's the controversy. We're going to wait to see what results. We're talking about 3,500 to 4,000 million pesos a year of these funds. That would help so much if this, peep, if this money from here went right to the people. And if you put the names of the, of the community and the schools <coughs> and you deliver it to the, um, to the people of, and the parents and families so that the societies make the use of the and, and create whatever they need and finalize the schools and co so that there be water, that they fix the bathrooms, to, to buy the, the furniture for the schools, so where their own children are studied, and so the society of parents and families and students uh, monitor the application of those funds from here. So we would distribute it directly from here. The, the 3,500 to 4,000 directly, this would guarantee that they would get it. And the other way would be to send it to the Secretary of Finance for each state. And from there, it would go to, to the treasurer from the area. And then it goes to, it would go to the, and then it would be the public works. And from there, they would make some kind of contract to make a work for the community. And then what would actually arrive at the end, was very little, si es que llega. If, it, if it even arrived at all. ¿Por qué? Because Puede ser it would happen entregue. that they deliver the money de to the Secretary of Finance, de ahí, and from there, refiere. it would be transferred. No va a los pueblos mineros, it wouldn't go to the minor towns. Eh, a Maybe it would go to construct an avenue in, in, in the capital of the state. That's a lot of what was happening with the popular security. They would send the money for the 
purchase of the medications and it was used for other things and there was no medication in the health center. That's one of the uh, matters in the controversy. So the judicial power needs to resolve that and we sustain that legally we have the reason. Two more and then we're going to go with the audit auditories. And one more person and we'll be ending. Regarding the migrants in Baja California, they say that they haven't had contact with the federal government and we've tried to make contact several times during uh, so we've been ignored by her when are they going to give us the, when are they going to show up in Tijuana and Mexicali to give responses to the society the communication with Horacio, you can uh, speak with him now. Go ahead and go. And one more uh, person. Hello, Mr. President. Something regarding the children that are missing, some historical, uh, something about human rights. I think it's going to be resolved. Uh, next week. So yesterday was the, the time that was supposed to end, but it also is dealing with feminicide, and it's being attended by Alejandro Encinas. Today I will ask him that he informed you regarding this matter. We've given him this matter to deal with. He is with dealing with the whole, uh, everything that's related to that, human rights. Even though I think that it is a designation of the, fifth of the district attorney. I think that, that it actually belongs to the district attorney. But however, we are going to address it due to the importance it has. I got to go, otherwise I'll be late. So I'm going to stop it there.